thought of the, the club no longer being there, which is a possibility now, it, it just it's breaks not my heart. It's a good day for the supporters of the club. It's not a good day for football anywhere when you, you know, when a, a club the size of Coventry, you know, gets into its, gets itself into such massive financial Amid trouble. the uncertainty, a deadline for bids to buy the company will pass on Friday. But whether that gives you control of the football club is still unclear. Leeds Coventry City Football Club is likely to be put into liquidation which is expected to result in a points penalty for the club. With liquidation one of the prospects raised by the administrator... Coventry City will start the new football season on minus 10 points. Now the Football League have said Coventry can play in League One after they agreed to the points punishment. It happened because the two sides that are entrenched in this battle, ACL, the owners of the Rico Arena behind me on the one hand, and uh, Sisu and, uh, and Otium, the owners of the football club on the other, couldn't reach an agreement today. Coventry City will face a 10 10-point deduction and they will accept a transfer of that Football League share to Oti. There was a hope this morning before this meeting that an agreement might be reached between the two sides so they could play their games back here at the Rico Arena. Certainly there was an offer on the table to that effect but the sides couldn't agree. None of the supporters want a situation where they're playing away from Coventry or where we're back in this situation again in a year's time. First and foremost, we're a Coventry team. The team needs to stay in Coventry. The creditors, the people that are owed money by the football club, uh, couldn't agree a CVA, which is a company uh, voluntary agreement. And as a result of that, Coventry couldn't come out of administration and instead they went into liquidation. I think he must be thinking, you know, what on earth have I got myself into? Um, this is, I, I'm sure this wasn't what he, uh, the, the vision that was sold to him when he took the job on. Wow, and what a story for Coventry City FC. You have to think about it through that time. That must have been so difficult for the staff and the players and the fans. Everyone involved with that club. That must have been the worst time going through the administration, the liquidation, all the stories, all the rumours, the points getting docked from the team and then also moving to Sixfields Stadium in Northampton which the game looks all up to date in that respect as to where they will be playing for the next few years that must have been the worst time ever for any footballer and staff member fan to go through it has to be the worst thing ever so that leads us perfectly in to where we are here with Football Manager 2014 just released a couple of days ago and what better place to start than with Coventry City FC after all that stuff going on we're going to try and bring them back from the depth of financial ruin as you can see the club over here is still an administration on the left hand side we are playing in the bottom right here Sixfield Stadium in Northampton not the best thing the club we can see on the graph is plummeting and it's just all bad news for Coventry City but we're here to turn it all around and that leads us to the next thing is why 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 am I managing the club what has happened well as it happens Stephen Presley has left the club after all the financial issues that have been going on he's had enough he's had enough he has left and that has called on a new manager which we have here and Mr Tony Owens who was going to lead the club for the 2013-14 season he is a New Zealand player ex-player a Sunday League player lowest experience and everything else you can get he is first first real management job this 26 year old comes from New Zealand but an English background so he has come back home from his years of playing club football in New Zealand manager player all sorts of experience reputation of nobody but Coventry City desperate for a new manager and they've picked up this young Kiwi slash Englishman to lead the squad from nothing so as we can see preferred formation a new feature from this year's game which we like the 4-1-2-1-2 but I don't think we'll be seeing too much of that just yet but that is what we've got Tony Owens to leave Coventry City for this season so as we join up with the club we've had a talk with the administrator who is Alan McNally he has come to talk to us, he wants to pull a meeting and wants to talk to us about where this club's going to go in the future after that traumatic time in the last few months. So we're going to head down to the meeting and have a look what he has to say. Okay, so it's our first interaction with the board and Mr McNally is welcoming us to the Sky Blues. He wants to take a few minutes of our time and welcome us to the club before handing over to the assistant manager who is going to dis 
discuss some staff responsibilities with us. He also wants to assure us that we have the full backing of the board and they wouldn't have hired us if he didn't feel that we were the right person to propel the club forward. Well, to be honest, sir, you couldn't go any further backwards, really. I guess they could demote again. So let's say, yep, it's great to get this meeting started. Look forward to working with the club, achieving big things, and appreciates the time of time out of his busy schedule to welcome in person. So Coventry City are obviously a club with a lot of history. The fans really appreciate it when a newly appointed manager has taken the time to increase their knowledge of the club. He says, I appreciate you might already know a fair amount about Coventry's background, but I can send you a detailed overview, overview of the club's history to your inbox, which would be great. We want to learn about the club. So that's great. Oh, that's exactly what I said. So look at that. So as it was mentioned at the welcome, the club has no general style of which they want us to play. And if we want to talk to him about any sorts of tactics we want to play, well, we can talk to him about that. But I think for now, I don't really want to call a meeting. We want to play a freedom because we don't know how this club is going to play out just with the players we have at the moment. So we're going to stick with just the freedom to manage how we like and not get too involved in any special tactics they're going to judge us on if we change our mind. It is tradition to hold a press conference when signing a new manager. Would you like us to set one up for you in the next day or so? Yep, that is a great idea. Meet the journalists and give the chance for the fans to see us in action. So now he's going to hand us over to the assistant manager, which will be nothing exciting. And, well, let's have a look to see what he sent us after we jammer on and tell the assistant manager we don't want him to do anything anyway. Okay, so our good old administrator has sent us a background. On Coventry City, we don't really get a hell of a lot of information, but we have a bit of a, a look at their history, where they, the club enjoyed probably their best spell of success during the 1980s, although now they are enduring a 26-year barren spell, having not won a competition since 1987. The Sky Blues still have a history of which they can be justly proud of. They have won Skybet Championship, won Skybet League One, won English Third Division South, and of course, the most famous of all, the English FA Cup, which is the pride, pride of the club, that one massive trophy. So in other news about the club, they play in League One, founded in 1883, they play at Sixfield Stadium, but if I can help it, not for too long, we want to build something else. Training facilities, Sky Blue Lodge, they're great training facilities. Do they still train there? I'm actually not too sure. Youth facilities, also good youth facilities. They have adequate junior coaching and above average youth recruitment. So that is it for the background of Coventry City. Nothing huge amount to go on there, but we've had a, a meeting with the administrator, our assistant manager, and we have a bit of a background on the club. So now we can look forward to other things. One thing I did find rather interesting though about this Coventry City facilities uh, page where we seem to be paying 400k a year to play in Sixfield Stadium. That's not the interesting part though, it's down the bottom. This one here, planned expansion due to move back into the Rico Arena on the 1st of the 7th 2016. I don't know if that's actually true to happening, but they are signed to play at Sixfields for three years from memory. So maybe we won't, we'll move back, but I'd prefer to build our own stadium and hopefully we can get some big rich guy to give us lots of money, get us out of this rut and we can build a flash new stadium and move back to Coventry. Of course, the thing that is very highly documented about the club is the financial, financial situation of the club at the moment and we can see here on the finance screen the net debt of the club is 41.35 million we have three loans outstanding at the moment which surprisingly a couple of them are only well one of them's nearly paid off it'll be about another four months and it is paid off and the others well they're they're an absolute pile pile of money left to go on those ones so we still have a lot of money to pay off, it's not looking too good. The cool thing about this version of the game, a projection screen for your finances. And as we can see, we're going to lose about five million pounds a season, which is something we seriously need to rectify. 
other things about finances that we can look at is wages. And that's a whole pile of trouble with the wages considering we are just under 10k over our budget. And I'm unsure if that's going to change leading into the new season. I haven't progressed very far. It's still the 9th of July, which is the starting date for English clubs on the game. So maybe we'll get some more money. I'm unsure, but if, if not, we, well, we're really going to have to slim down the squad a lot more. Oh, and just as I mentioned that we're unsure about the wages for the upcoming season, we get a letter in the mail, email, about the League One financial fair play regulations. Now, you guys who are familiar with the English leagues in football over there in the UK, you'll know what this is all about. Others of you who aren't too familiar about it, well, this will really sum it up for you. It's done on a percentage of what your income will be throughout the month. Now, I'm trying to figure out where that says that, but we have a wage bracket of £41,088 per week, so it will be monitored to make sure that we don't exceed that, because if we don't, we get another transfer embargo against us, and then they monitor our finances until we prove that we are within the limitations again, so that is a little bit different to how things normally used to work, but I think it is a better way of doing it. And I just remembered where I saw an explanation about it. Of course, players who are excluded from the wage check are under 21 homegrown players and players with contracts longer than three years if the club was relegated from the championship the previous season. So that can get fairly con um, confusing, but it is in here where we see exactly how it works this top line of the bottom paragraph teams competing in the Skybet League 1 must not spend more than 60% of projected income each month on player wages in order to comply with the financial fair play regulations so that's how it goes so a bad month can also well limit how you go it's going to be pretty tricky to keep these things under wraps but more the challenge more the fun good stuff Speaking of the squad, here it is. This is the senior squad plus a few reserve players as well as we look to the lead up to the first match, which is a friendly in four days' time. We have a fairly good squad, it has to be said. We can have a look at... Go up to here. Assistant reports from our assistant manager. And on the grand scheme of things, we have a lot of players in the four-star region for the division, according to our assistant manager. So that's not so bad. We have a couple of young talents, a lot of young players in the squad, but we will re we will rely on a few players to really stick this team together throughout the season because we are still under a transfer embargo. How long that will go on? Again, not too sure. Hopefully we can get something before the transfer window shuts, maybe some free transfers, and see what happens there. So we are in the Skybet League 1, which we have here. And, of course, we are minus 10 points to start the season, which is not a good start. But there we can see all the teams we will be coming up against, and it's going to be a pretty tough season. See how we can get on. The main objective here is to survive from relegation and, well, just get as high up that ladder as we can. I don't think anything too high up is too realistic at this stage, but we really need to get out of that red zone. So having a look at our fixtures list for the season, we have five friendlies coming up. We'll try to cover one, maybe two of those in this part if we can and continue the pre-season build-up in part two before we crack into the re league season with our round one match up against Crawley away, which will be our first game of the season in League One. So that is what we've got in store. The season will finish up on the 3rd of May against Sheffield United. And that is also an away match. Of course, in between all that, we have the Capital One Cup against Peterborough coming up in after the Crawley match. And then the Johnston Paint Trophy. Unknown who we're up against. Draw has not been made for that in well, as well as FA Cup, which is in November. We still have no draw for that as well. So that's what we've got coming up on the fixtures list. Plenty, plenty, plenty to look forward to. And as usual, like I did last year, I'll try to look at getting one month done per part and see how we go from there if you have any suggestions for what we could do for the layout of the series leave them below in the comments It'd be great something that has changed quite a bit 
It seems in this year's version of the game is the press conferences and now we have our first ever press conference since we started our new job and we are meeting the media with the first press conference for Coventry City at Sixfield Stadium. We have three journalists with us and well we kind of have a stab at this to see well just give you guys an opportunity to see what the press conferences are about now. So we have first got a question from Chris Simpson and he has this to say. Do you feel that your ambitions for the club are matched by the chairman? Well, well, I have to say, Chris, I'm going to stay relatively calm because technically we don't have a chairman at this stage, but I'm, I'm going to stay calm and I'm going to say I do, yes. Our discussions are often creative and there are a lot of uh, good ideas floated which promise good things for the future. So now, they've... We're happy with that question. We're going on to James with a very hard name I cannot say. And he asks, Do you feel the expectations asked of you this season have been fair and realistic? Well, again, James, I have to say, I'll stay calm and not get angry with him, that we don't actually have expectations this season yet. So, well, we can only go up. So, I'm going to be very happy with the direction we're going in and everyone at the club wants to be the best they can be nobody more so than me and I'm going to say that animated because it's a bit of a joke now we have Paul Hughes is coming up for a question how many questions do we get here he's got to say new managers often bring it about times of upheaval and some clubs some at the clubs might fear for their jobs will there be many changes so we're going to be absurdive because this guy seems to piss me off and um, I'll say that everyone has a chance to prove that they are worthy of being here. There we go. There's an answer for you. Now we're back to James. He's got another question. He has to say, While some managers are famous for their hands-on approach, others maintain a more reserved manner with their players. How do you see your management style? So these are pretty, um, these are pretty normal first press conference questions seems from last year even what they say so we're going to stay go back to being calm and we're going to say I want every player to know they can come with me come to me with every you know everything and anything so goodness me we're being very cliche here so we're back to Chris Simpson who has it is often said the different managers favor different competitions will you be concentrating primarily primarily on getting good results in the sky bet league one well, let's be considered because we haven't been anything else. And I think it's fair to say, I don't think it is right to prioritize one competition over another at this stage. So we're back with James again. And he has to say, Coventry aren't the richest of clubs and this is seen by some as a serious stumbling block. Do you think you'll be held back by the financial situation at the club? Well, I'm going to get pissed off of James because this is his third question. So, there we go. There is no importance, James. Key players can be found for no fee at all. What would you know, you jerk? You were just a simple journalist. So we're back with Chris Simpson. He has to say, As far as your backroom staff go, I can't really remember what Chris Simpson's voice was now, Will you be bringing in your own people, of all the likes of Steve, long last name, and Neil McFarlane being staying at the club? So that Steve guy, he's actually quite a, um, he's quite a stalwart of the club, that guy. Anyway, so the staff, we're back on the staff, and I'll be calm again. And, no, so we're going to talk to the staff here, understand what they do and how they do it. We don't have many staff here, so we'll probably be keeping with the same look. So we're back with James. I'll piss off James. Four questions, really. On the off chance that any agents read your comments today, is there a particular area of the squad which you are looking to strengthen in the future? Ah, oh, goodness me, James. Well, let's have a look. Transfer policy, really? We don't really have one because we're on a transfer embargo. What are you thinking, James? You're a bloody idiot. Uh, well, I guess... Defence? Defence, okay. So, back with Chris, Chris Simpson. You have taken charge when it is widely expected that Joe Murphy will leave the club. Can you hold on to him? 
do you want to? Assertive here, Chris. I want to keep Joe, and I'll be doing everything in my power to ensure that. Oh, and the press conference <laughs> is all over. So there we go. Uh, they're happy. The media is happy with the answers, and voila, press conference done. Now we can get into the matches. Match one of the friendly, Fisher against Doncaster. The preseason starts today for Coventry City with the first match in their preseason build-up for the League One season coming just a few weeks away. And our first match is at home at Sixfield Stadium against Doncaster. Now we've gone for a what FM calls a 4-2-4 formation, but personally myself I'd call it a 4-2-2-2, seeing as the way it's laid out. But that is the line that we've gone for and the lineup we have chosen, we've got Murphy in goal, we have Adams and Christie, the fullbacks, and Webster with Willis in the central defenders, Barton and Musa in the midfield with Fleck on the attacking left side on the wing and Baker on the right wing. Up front we have Manset and Clark to lead the forwards going at the front. So that is our lineup for Coventry versus Doncaster Sixfield Stadium. Let's get into the match, the first match of the season, pre-season coming up. So the first match up of the pre-season underway, Coventry City of Division 1, League 1, I should say, against Con Doncaster from the Championship. And it is a home match here for the Coventry team as Baker's got the first early chance for Coventry. And he clambers against the post. And a bright start for the Sky Blues. Their first shot away, getting on the post just 13 minutes in. And Doncaster quickly to counter-attack against it. Until it is spoiled. Spoiled chance from Clark, who's got it back to Baker. who put that first chance up. Manset on the left side. Poor pass, and it's been claimed and spoiled from Doncaster. Commentary have had a better start to this match. Early proceedings coming to the Sky Blues. Doncaster have a chance for Robinson on the edge of the area. Looking for his support. He swings it to the other side, but Adams deals with that. Back it goes to Sayers. Puts it on Cotter again, taking down the left. Furman, he's taken care of, but his husband puts a cross in. Brown hits it ahead. Robinson with the shot, can't get it away. Sayers has a shot from range against the pole. And Willis clears it away. Couple of big shots from both sides against the pole early on in this match. And that is highlights for the first half, ending in nil-nil. Neither -nil. side able to put one in the back of the net. And we get the second half underway. Coventry. Musa trying to lob one through the defence. And it is put back from Baker, but it's a horrible pass. Webster can't get back. The keeper's got no chance, and Murphy's made a hash of things. Doncaster score the first goal of the match. And lead 1-0 through Robinson. The worst part about that was that it was, was a mistake on the defensive part of Coventry. And to go with Murphy's lax approach of picking that up. It's Doncaster leading 1-0, and they're on the attack again. But Clark cuts that out. And back passes to Murphy, who clears it off his left foot, mind you. Baker gives it to Daniels, who puts it ahead again. Jones cuts it out. And they still reclaim positions. Here's Clark. Goes through the middle. Here's Musa. Has a shot from the area and scores the first goal for Coventry. Frank Musa, 1-1. First goal of the new era under Tony Owens. And Coventry right back in this match against the much more fancy opposition of Doncaster. Forrester goes wide for Bennett. Here's Doncaster down the right. Bennett with a chance. Into the middle crossed for Painter. Can't get through. Another cross comes in. Save from Burge. Painter with the shot must score. No. The substitute goalkeeper Burge has somehow saved that. On his own line, double save. And Coventry lived to fight another day here. But still on the attack, Duffy's pass is a miss. And cleaned up from the Coventry defensive line. Doncaster not giving up that easy. Bennett still attacking down this right-hand side. Forrester lost one through for Painter. Painter has a shot, but saved from the keeper. 
Doncaster had the bitter of the second half so far. Despite not only scoring one goal, they've definitely hammered away at the defence. They're attacking again now until they lose it to Lawton, who goes for Musa, who's been outstanding today. Gets the attention, leaves the ball behind. Three men on him. He crosses. Beautiful cross across the face for Baker. And Coventry hit the lead for the first time in the match. Through Baker, what a cross from Musa. Here's Doncaster now attacking. Same, same side, down that edge. And they hit the pole, paints off the pole and gets the rebound. And Doncaster strike back very quickly, 2-2. Two -two. Attacking down that right hand side, being very, very successful. Time is almost up here, 93 gone. Musa on the ball and the ref will blow the whistle. And Coventry finish up 2-2 two -two with Doncaster. And as per always, we can have a look at some stats from that match. Two all it ended up with Coventry. Well, you have to say, the underdogs from that match, and they have come out with a respectable result, despite looking at these graphs and seeing that it's pretty much all read throughout both teams having a numerous amount of opportunities but Doncaster having the better of that match with the shots heavily favoured off of them and oh look at all the stats there's a huge amount of stats both teams hitting the woodwork twice having a lot of half chances three for Coventry two for Doncaster and look at that, Doncaster five clear cut chances but only two goals that is good credit to the defence of Coventry just a pre-season game though Teams average rating 6.9 for Coventry and 6.81 for Doncaster. They well, won't be too pleased with those ratings in that first match out on the field. The passes, when you look through the percentages, they're not that great. But plenty of room to work on and a good result to start off. And plenty of stats for the Stats Fanatics. And that will wrap us up for part one of the series. We've got one match underway for the pre-season. And we'll be back for more matches of the preseason and anything else we can dig up. See if we can get some signings coming in, get out of the transfer embargo and get some coaching staff, some players maybe. See what we can do up as we head out for those final four matches of the preseason. And plenty more to come after that. So stay tuned for part number two coming very soon. And of course, thank you all for watching. The opening part of Football Manager 2014, Coventry City, Korea. And there, like I say, plenty more action to come. So stick around, stay tuned, and leave any inputs you like for the series to better it. Any players you'd like to see, real players are on, all that sort of thing. We're going to go very long into the career for this one. Very long. So, we'll see you all next time. Thank you for watching, and as always, take care.